John Barnett here and welcome to this uh, this little time here in my downstairs studio. We're all packed. The suitcases are upstairs. We're getting shuttled to the airport and Bonnie and I are leaving for two months on the road. And I'll be teaching uh, winter conferences, Bible conferences, uh, small groups. Uh, I'm doing uh, the Word of Life Bible Institute, both Florida and New York. Uh, there'll be I don't know, three to 400 young people that uh, are next generation students. And I'm teaching 20 hours through the book of Revelation, uh, first in New York, and then I'm going to go down and teach uh, the same 20 hours in Florida. But the reason I'm with you is that I always make a commitment wherever I'm teaching to do the same study before I teach. Uh, kind of like my mentor used to tell me, uh, never teach on any passage of scripture that you haven't read through 30 times. Uh, that was what John MacArthur said. Well, I do the same Bible study, devotional Bible study, as every class that I teach. And so I'm right in the midst of doing all 22 chapters of Revelation. This is my journal. You can see here, I put the little tabs on the edge, well, one tab for each chapter. Uh, I have... Uh, Oh, some of the key slides that I've developed, uh, little uh, clip outs of them. And uh, there are my notes in my journal and everything that I can find on the book of Revelation. I've just been devotionally studying, reading the scriptures and uh, doing just what many of you do. If you're in the 52 greatest chapters uh, study, it's a chapter each day, looking for the truths and the principles, summarizing it, giving a title, and then making that application prayer. But while I've been doing all that, uh, what happened is, and that's what I want to show you as I start the slides, let me get going here. Uh, I started collecting all of these slides into uh, a, a file on my computer, and it was my prophetic update file. And I wanted to illustrate all these truths for the young people. But then I thought, it's going to be, uh, we won't get back uh, for two months. And then by the time they get edited, it'll be, I don't know, mid-year before any of you can actually watch these classes on our uh, website. So I thought I'd give you a summary real quick before we take off. So here we go. Um, what I'd like to share with you is uh, God wants us to know his plan. That's the purpose of the book of Revelation. He has told us the seven clear events that are in Revelation. And all of you, if you've been with me very long, have seen this chart. Uh, this, you see down here, Revelation 1 to 3, 4 to 5, chapter 19, 6 to 18, 19, 11 to 23. You notice chapter uh, 19 has two parts here. It's the Jesus with his church here, and then the second coming of Christ here. Chapter 20 has two parts. Uh, the millennium and the great white throne and then heaven. So that's, that's the whole book of Revelation illustrated graphically. Uh, basically, if you distill down everything Jesus says, he would say that you, you know it's the end of the world when you see the birth pangs. That's the word he uses in Matthew 24, 8 and 33. He says there, there's going to be this increasing frequency of these trends and they're, they're going to intensify. Uh, global diseases will get lethal, warming will get hotter, water shortages will get worse, food scarcity will get more frequent, conflicts, war, murders, everything is going to get bigger and deadlier. Hatred of Christ and of his chosen people of promise, the Jews, is going to get more uh, intense and then global tracking is going to get more complete. Now, I want to pause before I jump into these headlines, because I, I think I have like 30 uh, different headlines I've clipped. And what I want you to know is when I'm reading the news, I read the news prophetically. In other words, I look through the window of the scriptures and, and I look at what God says is going to happen as I'm reading the news. Now, that's the only way you can do it without getting discouraged, saddened, uh, kind of like uh, feeling darkened by, by the horrible things that are going on. Uh, we, it's a curse that we live in a time where we can know about all the evil going on everywhere in the world all the time and see clips of it. 
on Twitter and, uh, and people post things on Facebook and everywhere else on top of the news sites. And it's just like overdose. So how do you keep uh, the peace and hope and joy and believing that the Bible talks about? By looking at the news through the scriptures. So let, let me show you how to do that. Uh, the first way I would say that you do that is through what I call the DTBM Academy. Uh, the DTBM Academy is a group of people, some of you are watching it right now, thank you, who have taken upon themselves to support us. Eight years ago, Bonnie and I left a, a wonderful, wonderful, well, actually, we didn't leave. We were sent out by a wonderful, wonderful church in Michigan, and they picked up half of our support to be missionaries. And those of you watching this, many of you picked up the other half of our support and are still supporting us. But some of you contacted us and said, is there anything else that, that you would do if the Lord provided finances? And I said, oh, yes, I would start the DTBM Academy that you see in front of you. And so we have all these, these courses and future courses right there. So go to that address, dtbma.com, if you want to register for free classes. Now, basically, what we're doing is capturing every class that I teach across the U.S. at conferences and around the world to seminaries, to Bible institutes, to conferences, uh, to medical missions, conferences for doctors, for uh, church planning missionaries, the Gideons, wherever it is that, that Bonnie and I serve, we, through the generosity of many of you, we buy the time of professional uh, photographers, videographers, and they film the classes for us. And I wear the gear, you know, the microphones and everything, and they capture the class and edit it and put my slides in. And all of that becomes free of charge, this DTBM Academy you see in front of you. So just wanted to tell you that. I hope you'll be a part of it. Basically, Revelation uh, gives a picture of what the earth looks like at Christ's coming. There are 12 of the trends that I'm tracking, deception, war and violence, food scarcity, pandemics, hatred of God and persecution of his people, quakes and seismic activity, global fires and smoke and gloom and volcanoes. Doesn't it sound like the news? Solar flares, near-earth uh, near objects, hurricanes, typhoons, the death of the ocean. Uh, I mean, they just were out trying to save coral in Australia because the water got too hot and it was killing the coral and they're taking samples of it to keep it alive in labs. Uh, water scarcity. I mean, if you, yesterday, the New York Times reported that one of the largest cities in the world, and it didn't name it, you had to read the article, Mexico City, is running out of water. They said the clock is counting down. Right there, look at number 11. Water scarcity is what God said was going to be a trend for the future and the coming alien invasion. By the way, the aliens are already here. They've already uh, made themselves very known. They've been here from the beginning. They are Satan's rebel angels, which the Bible calls demons. Okay, so those are the trends. But let me just cover. Uh, let me see what we are. We're eight minutes in. Uh, eight minutes into this, uh, this quick overview, I want to just cover three of the big trends of what's coming. Number one, global deception. Now, it's always first. And what I mean by global deception is, look, look what it says in Revelation 11. Uh, I saw another beast, that's the false prophet. He had two horns like a lamb, spoke like a dragon. This is a human that's energized by Satan, by demonic power. He exercises all the authority of the first beast, that's the Antichrist, and causes the earth and those who dwell on it to worship the first beast. So there's a time coming where everyone is going to be so deceived, they are going to choose to follow the beast. Now, what are some trends heading toward that? Well, look at this. A new kind of AI copy can fully replicate famous people and the law is powerless to regulate it. And it talks about one of our famous uh, psychiatrists who has a long teaching history in the University of California somewhere. And now they have taken everything he's taught and also uh, done AI with facial recognition of, of his characteristics. And they're making this bot 
that you can ask him any question. The computer will listen to it. It will go back through everything he's ever taught. And he, uh, something that looks like him, will talk on the screen and answer your question real time. Now, that, that was, uh, let's see, on uh, December 30th. By the way, all these headlines I've captured since Thanksgiving. So from Thanksgiving through the end of February. So around New Year's, that came out about that psychiatrist. Yesterday, yesterday, copyright uh, uh, files were made of Freddie Mercury, you know, the queen, uh, rock and roll singer, uh, now deceased, where they have made an AI version of him where they're going to holographically allow you to go to a Freddie Mercury concert. And they've, they've copywritten his name for AI and everything else, and they're starting. And soon, it won't just be him. You'll be able to, and probably you already can, but not at the quality that's coming. Uh, see anybody famous from the past. I mean, Elvis will be back in the room uh, and in the theaters doing everything. So that's just part of deception that's coming. How do you like this? You remember the big attack is always, Jesus said, going to be on his word? Because this, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if Satan is going to destroy the gospel, how is he going to do it? What would be his key way of doing it? Well, Jesus said, end of days deception is the most dangerous part, religious deception, clouding the clarity of the message of the gospel of the word of God. What's one way? Well, look, look, Bloomberg just announced this week and Business Week brought it uh, the same title, Can AI Unlock the Secrets of the Ancient World? There are so many inscriptions, manus look at these manuscripts. These are the Herculaneum scrolls. Uh, there was a Roman library outside of Pompeii. You remember the great eruption of Vesuvius? And, and all of that came and, and buried this library and compressed and superheated and charred the scrolls and made the scrolls, they, they look just like logs that have been in a fire. And they're they're wound tightly, these scrolls of, of Greek literature from the ancient world, and they have been impossible to decipher. I mean, they've cut them, they've sliced them. You know what they did? They x-rayed them using um, an AI machine learning technique, and they found out that wherever something was written, there was a minuscule uh, nanometer higher uh, resolution on the x-ray uh, you know, doing the study of the circles within these scrolls. And basically, they made it a game for 20-year-olds. If they could find a way to write a program that could find the bumps and find the shape of the bumps because the ink was slightly raised on each of the squash layers of the, of the papyri scrolls. And so some, I mean, you ought to read it. I mean, that article is amazing. They deciphered them by writing algorithms and they actually are reading the scrolls that have been buried for 2,000 years. And this is just the start. They're going to decipher every ancient scroll, and they're going to use all these machine learning tools. What, what's that going to do? Well, it's just, I mean, it's great. It's good for history. We're finding some ancient literature, the earliest copies of it. But who is the God of this world? If you are not sealed by the Holy Spirit, if you're not born again, if you are not cleansed by the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ who shed his blood for the remission of our sins, if you're not saved, who is your God who is running the course of this world and your life? Satan. That's the real conspiracy. Uh, don't waste your time on the political conspiracies and all the stuff going on right now. It's just so so boggling. The real conspiracy is Satan is doing everything he can to blind, Ephesians 2 says, the minds of everybody in this world. What's going to happen if they start finding manuscripts that they write an algorithm and it's even more pseudepigraphal, apocryphal, uh, false writings that claim to be from Christ and his apostles? I'm sure that's, that's coming. This, this algorithm is going to 
open the door for them to haul out everything they can from the rubbish heaps of, you know, Egypt's Nagamadi rubbish heaps. And they're going to start finding even more scripture they claim is equal to this. Did you know all the scripture that God inspired and he wants us to have, he gave first to Israel and they kept it in the tabernacle and under the custodianship of the priests and the prophets. And then Jesus affirmed every bit of the Old Testament that was inspired. He did not affirm the Apocrypha or the Pseudepigrapha. He said they were not scripture. He said only this Old Testament was scripture. Then he said in John 16 that the New Testament was going to be under the custodianship of the New Testament apostles. And every single book of the New Testament was either written by an apostle or by someone that wrote it in close proximity and under the authority of that apostle. And that is how Jesus said, you know for sure that you have the inspired word of God. So watch out for what is coming. Now there's the explosion of of digital money, we all know that, the cryptocurrencies, the digital dollar, everything else, and global tracking. Look what it says in Revelation 13. He, the Antichrist, causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to get a mark on their right hand or their forehead so no one can buy or sell except one who has the mark of the name of the beast Ooh. or the number of his name. Now think about what's going on. I, I like this. Privacy concerns are starting with Big Brother satellite. Watch this clip. This satellite, capable of spying on your every move, is set to launch in 2025. The satellite company, Albedo, can track cars, can track people from space, and it's raising privacy concerns. That's going to be a Big Brother always watching scenario. It, they claim that they won't use the, the facial recognition. But to refrain and, and to protect people when they can commercially make such a fortune, it's just amazing to think about. Well, that's just part of what's coming. Then the, the explosion of the desire for global peace. Uh, it says in 1 Thessalonians 5.3, Paul said this, this is a mark of the end of days. When they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them and they cannot escape it. What does he mean by that? He means there's going to be global fear. What would cause global fear? How about the weapons of, of mass, global wars, human death, and destruction? They, they're just exploding. And during the Great Tribulation, Jesus said in Matthew 24 that unless, verse 22, those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect, those he's chosen, those who are saved. He's shortening those days. What are some of the things we're seeing in the headlines? Well, how about this? Revelation 6, 8 says, I saw a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was death. And Hades followed him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword and hunger and death and the beasts of the earth. Now, the first thing I noticed in this Washington Post article, look at this, air pollution is producing antibiotic resistant pathogens. Uh, we know, I mean, going through COVID, we all have experienced what uh, death through the beasts of the earth, which are pathogens, which are germs and viruses and everything else. These are the biggest pandemic threats, COVID-19. And then look at all these that we don't even think about right here. Now in the news, they're talking about disease X, how deadly is it? Well, look, the Rift Valley fever, which is like vastly more deadly than COVID, is only a tiny, tiny uh, threat compared to the Marburg virus that's almost 80 to 90 percent lethality. Uh, uh, human bird flu are cropping up all across Southeast Asia. Uh, this was in the, the British paper. Uh, it tracks the cities and provinces, uh, both in China and Cambodia, and the strains. If you do a Google search string, every time they have a new case, it'll, it'll pop up. What, why would I read that? Because I know from Revelation 6, because I'm reading through the prophetic lens, that there's going to be 
a coming a time when these viruses, these beasts of the earth that you see right there, are going to kill a fourth of all humans. Two billion plus will die. Uh, on top of just the, the normal development of strains, artificial intelligence, Wired Magazine says, is building highly effective antibiotics antibodies that humans can't even imagine. So what they're finding is they can increase the, the effectiveness of antibodies, but they can also increase the lethality, the lethal nature of these pathogens. Uh, another thing that brings fear is the final war. Look at this. This, this was just February 21st, five days ago, how uh, the Chinese premier is pushing aside Britain to make the kingmaker of the World War III flashpoint of the Middle East be China? Should that be alarming to us? Well, look what it says in Revelation 16, 12. The final war involves the armies of the East, the kings of the East. That's what it's called. China, North Korea, whoever else is going to be involved from the East who join Iran and Russia. Now, Ezekiel 38 adds another uh, interesting word. Look, I put it in bright red for you. It says that the, the war that is going to descend upon Israel is going to be uh, championed by Persia. That's Iran. Iran. Let's find Iran on this map right there, the red dot. Look what they're doing right now. Yemen. Do you hear that in the news, that word Yemen? Iraq. Gaza, Syria, Hezbollah, and Lebanon. There it is. Hezbollah, Hamas, the Houthi rebels, uh, Qatar, Hezbollah, and the National Defense Force of Syria. I'm not saying that the left-hand panel there is, uh, is Ezekiel 38, but I'm saying that everything Ezekiel 38 says is shaping up. How about this? Armageddon is the gathering of the nations to march on Israel. Look at this, axis of resistance. This is the pipeline of deadly weaponry trying to exterminate the Jews that goes into Iraq, Iraq, across the desert to Syria, up to Hezbollah, down into Jordan, and over to Gaza to be fired against the Jewish people. Here's another headline, uh, January 28th. World War III fears as experts warn Iran has uranium to make 12 nuclear bombs in five months. It seems like everybody is using everything they can against everybody they can, whether it's in the Ukraine, whether it's now down there in Yemen. But what is going to happen when Iran, the prince of Persia, one of the the demonic nation leaders that we read about in Daniel, when the prince of Persia has a weapon of mass destruction, a nuclear bomb that can be shot on a ballistic missile to Israel. Well, the Bible calls that World War III. Zechariah says it will happen in that day. I'll make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all people. Who would heave it away, they'll surely be cut in pieces, though all the nations of the earth are gathered against it. In other words, what it's saying is there's this inexorable draw for the destruction of Israel that all the nations of the earth are going to get involved in. This is a headline from the European papers, On the Brink, Countries That Could Be Involved in World War III. Well, the Bible says Russia is one. Uh, by the way, Ukraine is called Scythia. You find the Scythians mentioned in the Bible. Uh, of course, Lebanon... Here's Israel. Uh, that's the target. Iran is very much mentioned. Uh, the kings of the East, look at this. North Korea, China, uh, China against Taiwan. I mean, it could be, what if India joins all of this, march across? But all you see is the secular papers, as you look through the lens of Scripture, are saying the same thing the Bible says, that it's heading up. We're on the brink of World War III. Uh, you know, the... Biden could release strikes uh, because of the strikes on our troops. Putin could, uh, you know, massively amp it up in, in the Ukraine. Uh, what if China and Taiwan and North Korea all join with what's going on in the Middle East? 
that's just just the scenario. Uh, by the way, what what causes the Antichrist rise? What is he called in Revelation six verse one? He's called the white horse. He comes to bring peace to the world that's right on the brink of destruction. And there's this God allows a man to be like the Messiah the world's always wanted to bring peace. And that's what the Antichrist does. And then he turns the whole world against God. What are some other ones of the fear factors? What about the explosion of global weather? I just talked to someone yesterday. He said, isn't the weather funny? I said, yes. I mean, they're flooding in California. There are tornadoes in the Mississippi Valley and Ohio Valley. And there's, I mean, it's just like unusual warmth in February in parts of America. It's just amazing. What does Jesus say in Luke 21? There'll be signs in the sun the moon and the stars, on the earth, distress of nations, perplexity. People are going to be puzzled. The sea and the waves are going to roar. It's the weather. Men's hearts will fail them from fear and expectation on those things which are coming on the earth, for the power of the heavens will be shaken. I know there are cycles. There's a solar cycle. There's a drought cycle. They told us a couple years ago we were in the thousand-year drought that hits the southwest of the United States. They see it in the tree rings. But what happens when all of the, the fixed you know, cycles all together are disrupted? Well, we call it climate change, global climate change. And we're seeing more and more of that. I mean, look at this. Last year in 2023, look at all these billion-dollar disasters the insurance companies are dealing with. Again, it's the same verses right here from uh, uh, Luke 21. How about this? 2023. This is normal. This is uh, all the past years, and this is 2023 for one of the largest forests on earth. Why is that important? The Canadian wildfires we saw last year. Because look what's coming in Revelation 8, 7. The first angel sounded, hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and there were thrown the earth, and a third of the trees were burned up. A third. And look at this. All green grass. There's coming a lot of smoke to this earth during the tribulation. We're just seeing the beginning of it. And during the tribulation, there are massive solar instabilities. That's the fourth trumpet. What I just read about was the first trumpet. But when we get to the fourth trumpet in Revelation 8, 12, and 13, and it's amplified in the bowls of Revelation 16, the solar instabilities, look what happens. Now, February 22nd, three days ago. Did a solar flare cause AT&T outage? AT&T yesterday issued a $5 credit to all AT&T phone users. The reason I know is we have AT&T cell phones and we got a $5 credit. For what? An inexplicable outage that corresponded with one of the largest solar flares. Look also on February 22nd. The sun just launched three huge solar flares the most intense of the current 11-year cycle. But what does God say is coming? Revelation 16, 8. The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given him to scorch men. It won't just be the cell phones that get scorched. It's going to scorch people. That's how hot it's going to get. And then Revelation 8 says that the ocean's going to die. Look what the LA Times uh, reminds us of. 56,000 barrels of radioactive waste were dropped. That, that's a picture right here of one of these leaching barrels of radioactive waste. Deadly, toxic, radioactive waste. 56,000 55-gallon drums were dumped right off of the coast of California. It, they say it's just going to cause death. Well, what does God say? Well, much worse than a barrel is what God's sending in Revelation 8. A second angel sounded something like a great mountain burning with fire is thrown in the sea, either an asteroid or a comet. And a third of the sea becomes blood, and a third of the living creatures of the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. So all we're seeing are these little kind of run-ups, the beginning of the birth pang, the, the beginning of the, the fear factor, of the deception factor, what about the Psalm 83 wars? Um, 
Zechariah says that Jerusalem is going to be heavy stone for all people. So that's how I know Israel's going to survive to the end, and Jerusalem is too. If I could afford it, I'd live there in Jerusalem, kind of live in the center of the world of the Bible and prophecy. But I have to settle with taking groups there in our Land of the Book video study tour. But the day is coming at the end, look at this, when all the nations of the earth gather against Jerusalem. Remember, Persia is going to lead the gang. And it's going to come with Russia. Well, look at what's going on right now, right there in that crucial juncture called the Bab el Mandeb Strait between Yemen and Ethiopia or Eritrea, the Red Sea right here. Look what's happening at that flashpoint. Iran is supplying Yemen with enough gear to halt global shipping. So, what's the US doing? How do you like that headline? Biden's Revenge. He sent, he sent about two weeks ago B-1 bombers from Missouri in the U.S. over here. Look what they did. They bombed Syria and Iraq. Wow. How Red Sea chaos could affect and keep going. December, you saw all these headlines. Look at all these attacks on the shipping again. Psalm 83 says, look what some, I'll read it to you. Uh, for they have consulted together with one consent. Look, they have formed a confederacy against you. Edom, the Ishmaelites, Moab, the Hagrites, Gabal, Ammon, Amalek, Philistia, and the inhabitants of Tyre and Assyria. What's that? It's this area. All those peoples are going to have a confederacy against Israel. Well... Uh, we're already seeing even wider, uh, you know, it's the, these Gibal, the Hagrites, all of these Ishmaelites, Ishmael's descendants came all through the Arabian Peninsula. Basically, all of these peoples are forming a confederacy against Israel and Iran is fanning the flames. That's the Psalm 83 war. That's why Biden's strike is only hitting the hornet's nest. Um, World War III is ready to blow. Again, another headline. This is not from prophetic Christian news services. This is international news are seeing the, the powder keg and the tinderbox that Israel has become for the whole world. And Iran, with Russia's help, and China is sending supplies, and Iran is exporting all of this uh, dangerous, dangerous uh, weaponry. Okay, the, the question real quickly is this. How do you keep from getting discouraged? We're in minute 34 and it's really time to go and I have to go get the flight. And I'd like those of you that are watching this to pray for us as we go, that we would uh, be able to serve the Lord and I could teach, and Bonnie and I, we always do evangelism everywhere we go. We meet with small groups, we do discipleship and counseling alongside all this teaching, and thank you again. I don't know how many times I can say thank you to all of you who wonderfully support us, both by prayer and going with us through your financial support of us as missionaries. But let me take you to these slides, and this is, this is my closing application. How do we keep this biblical prophetic view that fills us uh, thy words were found, and I did eat them. That's Bible study. And thy words were for me the joy and rejoicing in my heart. How do you keep joy and rejoicing with bad news all around us? Here's how. Start an online study of Revelation. If you've never done this before, join us in the Academy. Right here's the Academy. There's the web address. Here is one. There are many prophetic series in there. How it all ends, Revelation 2023, 20, the return of the king, Christ's last words for his church. So many courses. Go there. It's totally free. All you have to do is register. It's totally free. Number two, start an audio study of Revelation. Uh, I just was telling my son uh, as he was sending us off the airport, I said, we were standing in a 7-Eleven, Bonnie and I, in uh, Florida. And it was amazing. It was midnight. We just got off a plane. I was headed in to do a Bible conference in Florida. 
And uh, it, there was a screen at 7-Eleven. It was midnight, glass up, little hole. I was trying to talk to the clerk behind the glass, and I leaned over and I said, um, which of the three machines do I put my credit card in? And behind me, I heard a voice, Dr. Barnett. I'd recognize that voice anywhere. And I turned around, there was a truck driver. And he said, during COVID, I got so afraid of COVID and wearing my mask and afraid I was going to die. He said, I typed into Google, uh, finding God. And he said, somehow your videos came up. I said, somehow that's the spirit of God and guiding your algorithm to search and to get the gospel. He said, well, it worked. He said, my computer that I have next to me when I drive, he said, I don't watch YouTube videos. I listen to YouTube videos. And he said, you came up and he said, I punched it. And he said, I started doing six hours a day in my truck. You know what the short word in 7-Eleven at midnight was? He said, I became a Christian. I'm saved now and I'm going to school with you. He said, I just decided since you're the one I listened to and got saved, I'm going to listen to you some more and understand the Bible. Start an audio study of Revelation. Me or anybody else, just uh, here's, here's one way to do it. This, this is something on our website, dtbm.org, resources. Here is my entire study of Revelation as 50 audio lessons. Uh, actually, it says 52 52 lessons, one for every week of the year. You can listen to it for an hour or start a year-long devotional study of Revelation. What that is, is all those tapes have been put into a book. This is my dissertation from Dallas Theological Seminary. It's called Living Hope for the End of Days. Uh, Dr. MacArthur even wrote an incredible foreword to it. But those are just some ways for you to get started. Either join us in the academy. It's free. Start studying anything. There, the book of Hebrews, the book of Proverbs. There's uh, right now. I'm 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 doing Christ's last words for his church, which is Revelation two and three. Or listen. Some of you aren't watchers. You're not visual. You're auditory. Or you're a reader. Get that living hope for the end of days. But all of them just get you back into the scriptures. Get your journal and start once a day writing down what you find, and then looking at that prayerfully and saying, Lord, and pick some of the truths you found and write a prayer of what you want God to do in your life. Let, let me just get right here my prayer right there. This is from my latest chapter in Revelation. I'll close with this. Lord, I want to remember at all times how you saved me. Teach me day by day to resist the world and say no to my flesh to the world, and to the devil. Write all over my life, your new life, that you have created for me to live. Empty me today of all pride. Center my life on you, not on me. Fill me with your love, your joy, and your peace. For Jesus' sake, amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining us for this prophetic update. Look at the news through the prophetic lens, and I'll see you next month when I show you everything else that I've clipped from the news. Bye-bye.